This week's videos are sponsored by HelloFresh. More on them after the reaction, people. What is going on there, citizens of the Reject Nation? We are going to watch the latest big movie from Netflix. Woo! Because we missed out on the Bird Box hype, and we are not missing out on this hype train. I'm telling you that much, because we do not want to be left behind for Leave the World Behind. John, are you ready for the next two and a half hours? So I couldn't be more ready. Are you, are you ready to get down every single messaging? Are you ready to explain yes. the ending to the audience mm -hmm. after we have witnessed it to break down all of its meanings? Compare it to whatever book it's probably based on and break down that as well. I have no idea what we're about to Me watch. Either. <laughs> <laughs> I have not even seen a trailer, but... Boy, are people talking about it, so yeah, let's do it. Leave a like on this video, subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't get left behind of the reject world when we have something here. You know why the subscribe button's for. Guys, thank you to Prepper for helping us set it down these highlights. Also, full-length reaction watch-alongs where you sync up with your own copy of Leave the World Behind, available for our super sexy rejects. Those are our patrons, yeah, and over there buddy. we cover several things exclusively with highlights and watch-alongs included. All right, I am ready to explain this movie Good. to everyone. Me too. Because I'm going to nail it. I'm going to nail this watch, guys. <laughs> I know what it's about already. <laughs> Spooky, me and like Twilight Zone vibes. Planet Earth. Is that something coming to our planet? It's the star that led the wise men to Jesus. A siren warning us about the dangers? Mm. I'm about to show you all how smart I am. I couldn't sleep, and it has been such a hellish year for us, as you know. Oh, you have no idea what you're about to get into. <laughs> <laughs> you are just constantly anxious about your job because of all the budget cuts. So I went online this morning and I rented us a beautiful house out by the beach. Budget huh. cuts at Business Corp. All of this is going to feel so minimal. I thought I'd get a jump on it. Look at the crack. <laughs> crack in the blue earth. Oh, yes. I figured if I made the reservation and packed our bags, it would eliminate most of the reasons to say no. Where are you escaping from, woman? I didn't want to wake the kids, so I haven't packed for them yet. But honestly, I think they're going to be super psyched about this. It's an interesting symmetry to the way they're shooting all this. They're always down for yes. a little vacay, especially with the kids. It's like the sun and the moon. Oh, look at it. Symmetry again. <laughs> Deep. When I couldn't fall back asleep this morning, I came over here to watch the sun rise. Right, right. And I saw all these people starting their day with such tenacity. Then you had an existential crisis. Make something of themselves. I felt so lucky to be a part of that. Oh, we get so caught up in the immediate moment, but none of this made me matter as, whoa, trippy shot. Then I remembered what the world is actually like, and I came to a more accurate realization. <laughs> it's like a 70 I shot. I hate people. <laughs> I love her! <laughs> I love her! Worn out faces, worn out woman. places, worn out right faces. So true. Damn, dude. What? So Obama's produced this? <laughs> so this is going to be environmental. I uh, have an idea for a motion picture. It's like an eye is watching us. Man, good catch, good catch, good catch. It's cool you guys can just, like, do this. Yes. I like how chaotic the sound design is here. Look at that. They're all in a car, but they're all in their own world. Oh. Friends? Julia Roberts had guest starred in an episode of Friends 2. Oh, maybe it's this one on the screen. It's not. Oh, damn it. No, she was in season two, John. Oh, Please. Okay. All right, fine. Don't be a freaking moron when the camera's pointed at us. <laughs> Part one of the house. Is this like a knock at the cabin kind of movie? That's the vibe I'm getting. One of those WTF movies. <laughs> well, like, family goes to vacation, getaway house. But it's like, I heard it was like an apocalyptic film. Spoiler. I don't know what that means. Wi-Fi password is a novella. The owner must be one of those cybersecurity guys. The kids look so happy. Aw, dad. Ha ha ha. Huh. The higher you climb, 
the more your world's going to be turned upside down from the reality of the situation. Yeah. Yeah, see, I get movies. What a lovely composition. Oh my god, with the staircase and the motion of the camera and her blocking. Nah, that's there what the AI does now. A ridiculous amount of blue in this movie. Yeah. Tis. Well, you know, blue symbolizing, you know, the normal, the familiar, you know, the blue pill, if you will. Was that the Baconator? Oh! Let's go! Get out of there. I, th I believe they've done a movie together before. Pretty Woman. He was Richard Gere. That's right. <laughs> he did a great <laughs> job playing Richard Gere, let me tell you. They're not mine. Relax. I bought them. I know you like to sneak a smoke here and there. I figured we're on vacation. Why not? I want you to have a good time. Sure. It's just, a, just an easy thing to stop doing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I got another idea for a good time. Intimacy. And maybe... Oh, man's pent up. 15 minutes before they're begging to go to the Get beach. Get to it. That's all I know. Get to it. <laughs> nice. Nice, guys. Oh, and a... And a <laughs> it's her pretty faster, John. Ah! We're going in a roundabout circle in life. Well, and you know, he... There was a circular... Anyway, uh, they just engaged in... I don't want to say it. God, you're making us look so stupid. Just enjoy the movie is what some <laughs> comments are saying. You know, a circle is kind of like a hole and... <laughs> is this going to be an environmental movie? I really don't know. I can't <laughs> tell. I mean, maybe. I mean, Although everything's been so lush thus far. But I like it's like the music choices. They have this like sci-fi undertones throughout. Yeah. Like Noah's ship. Oh, there you go. Two of every person on board. It's getting closer. Oh, yeah. She's a beaut. Looks like an oil tanker. Mm, the things that pollute our waters. Uh oh. All these swooping angles. You okay, Rose? I think that ship is heading towards us. <laughs> Only the kids be paying attention. Gen Z is going to fix it. Oh my god. Oh, that is kind of scary, actually. That's unsettling, yeah. Wake up. Archie, come on, bud. Hey, help us back up. Believe it already? Why? That's why. Wow. Wowie. <laughs> That's a terrifying shot. <laughs> that is unnerving, yeah. That is a really terrifying shot. White Lion, Jesus Christe. <laughs> wow. Ooh, buddy. Jeez. White lion. Yeah. Let her roar onto that beach. Roar. Excuse me, officer. You know what happened? There's been a handful of these groundings up the coast. Something to do with the nav system. Because we've lost our way. The Wi-Fi isn't working. You think the router needs a reset? Well, sorry, I can't help you there. You are the tech whiz, not I. You know the TV's out too. This is my worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> By cutting off cable TV and the beer supply, I can ensure an honest winner's work. Oh my god. Slow down, appreciate life. Oh, wow. Should I get my gun? <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like someone's gonna shoot them. That's a good omen. Seeing deer, at least according to Mesoamerican mythology. Damn, well read guy. That's the very last episode of Friends. At least they made it to the finale. Dude, yeah. You can die happy now. Because it'll make oh. it harder. And isn't that the point of my life? Ooh, Jenga, great metaphor for a collapsing society, yeah. Mm -hmm. A precariously assembled apparatus that I could topple can. at any moment. Her second book is like an exploration of how media serves as both an escape, which is a contradiction that she manages to reconcile. Seems like it's kind of what this movie's doing. Oh, man. Metal. Someone's here. Get a bat. A bat? Why would I have a bat? Because you're in the purge. Yes. <laughs> Lock down the house. <laughs> this is interesting that nowadays, like, a knock at the door is like, let me get the bat. <laughs> Hello? Hi. I'm so sorry to bother you. In case you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you must be Amanda. You must be Amanda? Hello, Amanda. You, you two know each other? No. We have not had the pleasure of meeting face to face. I'm, I'm GH. George. He's George. That's how it reads in his email. 
<laughs> Uncle Good Hank. See, this is why I much prefer life before the internet, because we would have spoken on the phone, we would have recognized my voice and known that this is our house. Whoa, what a crazy shot. Woof. What a divide. This is your house. Why are you being judgmental about it? I'm sorry, you think we could come inside? Woof. There's a loaded shot for you. How did they do that shot? <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. I understand how strange this must be for you, us turning up like this unannounced. We'd have called, you see, but uh, the phones are out. Yeah, my uh, my phone doesn't seem to have service. It's almost as if we're telling the truth. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> Jay, agree. Why are you guys making this so goddamn awkward? Why don't we sit down and, you know, talk? And listen to some Bikini Kill. Children are sleeping. I wouldn't worry too much about them. I mean, Archie'd sleep through the atom bomb. Foreshadowing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's on the board of the Philharmonic. He likes to encourage everyone he knows to take an interest in classical music. Oh my god, he's his character out of Green Book. I'm driving back to the city home, then something happened. A blackout? The lights here seem to be working pretty good. We have a generator. So there was a blackout, and you decided to drive all the way out here. These roads, they're familiar. I barely even thought about it. So when we saw the lights go, I looked at Ruth. And said that he would feel better if we stayed here. It's the implication that she's suspicious because he's a black man. Yeah, this is way too big and nice a house for him to afford on his own. Under the circumstances, we, we thought you might understand. Of course. Mi casa is su casa as our casa is su casa. We thought maybe if you let us stay. Because again, it is like our house. <laughs> <laughs> what she's trying to say is we wanted to be somewhere safe. Uh-huh. We could absolutely refund you your money. You want us to leave? It's the middle of the night. My, my children are sleeping upstairs. You come in here and talk about refunding our money. I, 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 I think I need to call the company. Whoa. Dude, chill. We're not saying you should leave. We're saying we should all sleep together. Yeah. 50% of what you paid. You know, there's an in-law suite. We can stay downstairs. Downstairs. 50%. I think we need 50%. <laughs> I am so Ethan Hawke in this position. I'd be mean, like, yeah, do 50%, man. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable staying in a house with. Oh, finish that sentence. Should have listened to my wife and had these labeled already. Yeah, you better find the right one quick, though. No, that's good. It makes you suspicious. Like, did he take the keys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chekhov's gun. And Chekhov's gun. They, they would cue the audience in that there's a gun there. It's a really interesting. They break perspective. $1,000 an hour for the night. That should cover almost half of what you're paying for the weekend. $1,000? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you think they're lying? I mean, it's a young woman and her father. They look innocent enough. They're strangers. But they introduce themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they introduce <laughs> themselves. <laughs> What if, what if, what if the blackout and, and, and whatever, that's just all part of the story. In the boat, going on the beach, what if this was yeah, all them? What if they did all this to convince <laughs> us to let them stay here? He had the keys, remember? So what if he had the keys? Maybe he's the handyman. She's the housekeeper. The housekeeper always oh. knows where the stash of money is. You're saying some of the most racist shit without saying, hey, <laughs> without hey. to flat out saying. <laughs> <laughs> she's seen the help, okay? She's doing her part. Something is happening oh. and I don't trust them. I think they are scared, nice people who need a place to spend. Whoa. Is that a security camera? What the hell is this shot? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm going to have a drink. Haven't touched this one yet. It's all yours. Oh, thank you. All right. What's in it exactly? Mm. <laughs> that is a heck of a cocktail. You should try this, babe. I think you dig it. I'm about to knock out. <laughs> yeah, I'm drunk already. <laughs> I think I need some fresh air. She's got some interesting tattoos. I wonder if they are hers or if they are for the movie. I like this. This is like acting toward the force, man. Everyone's so good. It's such a good rhythm. How long have you been here? Bought it almost 20 years ago now. Fixed it up about five years back. Had a great contractor. A lot of little details were his idea. Whereabouts is your place in the city? We are on park between 81st and 82nd. Wow, you talk like a cop. <laughs> Where's your wife? Curious if you're worried about her in the city. My wife. Well, she's on a work trip in Morocco. Her flight is due back here in the morning, actually. Can I see your ID? Whoa. Yes. Left my wallet in my coat pocket, which I checked at the symphony. Said you heard about the blackout while you were on your way home. Uh oh. Whoa. This is a national emergency. All radio stations and 
televisions will cease their programs during the- This is the purge. Yeah. <laughs> you got 12 hours. Oh, we're only talking about blackout here. A blackout is not nothing. It could be something. It could be a symptom of something bigger, like terrorism or a bomb, like the one that you said your son would sleep through. <laughs> <laughs> she looks very familiar. I think that we should stay here tonight. For 500 more dollars. Yes. <laughs> Oh, oh no! Symbolism. Symbolism. <laughs> what do we get to do tomorrow? There, laundry. Wowie, that's a nice what a basement, shitty though. basement. I mean, yeah, what a dump. We need to get them out of here. We're not gonna do that by scaring them. Whoa! They need to think everything's gonna be okay. Interesting. They would cut to this perspective. Everything is gonna be okay, isn't it? Oh, uh, when it comes time to survival, you just gotta. Be with your own. I don't mean that racially. <laughs> Be with your loved ones <laughs> or chosen family. She was f***ing with us. Don't take it so personal. I don't think I can listen to much more of that snark. Even if this does turn out to be their house. <laughs> well, there is not one photo on the wall. Not one. Not a wedding picture of the supposed art dealer wife on the business trip or that <sighs> spoiled brat as a baby. Wolf. Why didn't you say anything about what we saw at the beach today, that boat? It was an oil tanker. <laughs> it's not a boat. It's a yacht. Oh, oh cyber attack. Oh, yeah. No, they said the naval radar. The curve. The, curve. the navy thingy. Maybe it's not an apocalyptic movie. Yeah. It should still be an apocalyptic thing. Yeah. Maybe it's an AI apocalypse. I was literally about to start the friend series finale, but the internet on my iPad still isn't working. This is why you should download it. There's something wrong with the TV. It's all messed up. Please fix this. I have incredible <laughs> anxiety about how they're going to wrap up the show. <laughs> it's a vacation. Dad's out on vacation. We can have as much screen time as we want. Well, I did not say that. <laughs> Clay, look, look. <clears throat> You think those black people programmed this on my phone? <laughs> I was just there. There were four news alerts, two about the blackout and one that said uh, hackers were behind the power outage. Maybe they hacked the cell network? Is that, is that a question? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to the store, buy a newspaper, find someone who knows more than we do. I will take care of this for us. <laughs> His hair looks great still. Yeah. Got great bed head. It's going out into the quiet place. Whose car is that? It looks expensive. Let's get some breakfast. Oh, damn it. They are rich Philharmonic types. Dad, can you fix it? Yeah, see? No, it's just, it's not working. I'm aware. <laughs> I'm going to go to the store later, and maybe I can find something that, you know, help. You know, get one of those, uh, some rabbit ears or something. It's like watching a play. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's just enough chairs for everyone to sit at. Dude, it's like it was planned. Oh my. There's more deer than before. They're just waiting to take back the earth. You can pet them. They won't bite you or anything. Bond with nature. You're going to be totally safe. Dude, if you keep your feet on the grass for 20 minutes, it'll make you feel like crazy good and stuff. Wowie. Wowie. You're a weird kid. Yep. Maybe she can communicate with them. <sighs> 96. What does that mean? Oh. It's radio station. John, tell me that about the numbers. What is the symbolism of well, the Well, they're numbers? facing away from each other, and so it, it symbolizes uh, a rift in ideology, division, okay. people pitted against one another, or people back-to-back -back facing out. Brevity is a soul of witch. Aha! Uh -huh. Hackers. Mm -hmm. Where are the power plants in New York City? Why are you asking about power plants? Because the power went out. You remember that thing that happened in Jersey a few years back? It nearly caused a meltdown. What the hell is she talking about? The thing! If it's okay with you, I would like to keep what's going on between the adults. The kids like the pool. I'm just going to encourage them to do that until we know more. I don't want to scare anyone, but I disagree with you. Disagree with me about what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is nothing. What is it that you do? I'm in advertising on the client side. I manage relationships. This little girl takes command of the scene, man. Where's Clay? He went to the store to get a newspaper or try to find someone to talk to to see if they know what's going on. Kevin Bacon. Oh, yeah, Kevin Bacon. Thought I'd go over to our neighbor's house, the Huxleys. You often see no one here around this time, but I'll drive over anyway and check. 
Before you go, you might want to hear about the alerts. Alerts. Oh. News alerts on my phone this morning. Two of them what? were about the blackout, but then there was one that said something about maybe hackers were behind it. Is he behind it in some way? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what it means when this camera starts looking down at everybody. I'm sure this will turn out to be a big nothing. Like that love you bug. This feels very Twilight zone -y. What's a love you bug? It was a computer worm spread throughout the internet back in 2000. People would get an email with the subject line that read, I love you. If you clicked on the attachment, it would send it to all your contacts. Oh, cool. Turns Why out it was just two teenagers in the Philippines. Pinoy pride, baby. <laughs> hey. I mean, still pretty consequential. And what message did that just send to her? I think I'll go rush Archie along. I mean, he's trying to minimize the fear factor right. to get them out, and she's trying to scare them into getting out. I'm worried about mom. You think her flight is going to be okay? Nah. Sure. Matter of fact, I bet she's been redirected to some airport in Ohio. What a transition through that glass. She's probably cursing out every customer How service they... rep till they put her on a plane home. How do they... <laughs> yeah, these reflections are wild. Were they just in the house? <laughs> yeah. And then they, they went out. Did a really that? sneaky pan through the window there, and then they added the glass back. Man, this over-reliance on technology. Dude, you're going to crash into the beach with a GPS like that. You're going to crash into, like, 47 deer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Huxleys. Send them all as a text. Ugh. Okay, well, I believe this really is his house, though. At least. I love how there's, like, the composed music is in such stark contradiction with its uh, soundtracks. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, you know, hi. What are you looking at? They're just lurking behind the shrubs. Oh, interesting. A dark horse, not okay, a pale horse. I need horse. to look up what a deer and a horse symbolizes. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in this situation it's, is a bit of a dark horse. It's too deep. It's too deep for me now. The ongoing cyber attack has led to a catastrophic environmental disaster in the south, impacting animal migration patterns. 1619, is that a... S Number six and nine keep coming back. Yeah. I'm like, where's 1619? Where exactly are we in history? U.S. history? I will figure you out, movie. Yes. <laughs> Challenge accepted. I will accepted. leave smart. <laughs> <laughs> Smarter than you. <laughs> Reflection. Reflection. Reflections. Reflections. Constant theme. Reflections. <laughs> Constantly with the pose of the upside down. Wowie. I mean, there's just from the wind. Some of that stuff, they had to have thrown oh, out no, There's a breaking. Definitely a breaking. Yeah. Archie, I saw something this morning. Deer. They're everywhere, dumbass. <laughs> this was yep. different. Yep. Like, they were trying to tell us something. Let's see what else is out there. Yeah. Maybe there's like an army of hedgehogs. Hello, anyone home? It's GH. I let myself in. Squelch intensifies. Aww. Well, if they introduce themselves, they're not a stranger anymore. That's right. <laughs> Hello? Oh, good. Where have we transitioned to with these? <laughs> Deep in the heart of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they, were, they were just at the pool a second ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is unincorporated land on the edge of this is like pristine estate. <laughs> oh, is he getting like all the guns together? Oh no, okay. Alright. That was racist, John. I'm sorry. Sat phone. Satellites are out too. There's a cyber hack. We saw at the beginning of this part two that the satellite was yeah, falling asleep. Turned a little bit. That means Oh my god. It's off. He's wearing his obey shirt. Dude, symbols. Maybe it's just where he sleeps though. Where he hides at night. <laughs> oh god. Whoever made that impression. Dude, you found Bigfoot's hut. The geography of this is fascinatingly framed. 
Man, I love the music, though. Oh, yeah. Feels kind of tribal. Necesito usar su teléfono. Yeah, El yeah, mío yeah, está no, muerto. No, no, I, I don't have any service either. I, uh... Tenemos que salir de aquí. Acabo de ver un avión que estaba... Something red. <sighs> Everyone who speaks Spanish probably knows what the whole movie's about now. I know. <laughs> But if she's laid out the entire movie. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Oh my god. Step on the gas pedal faster. Oh god, the look on his face, just fixed, still motionless. That language barrier, we can't help, we fear the unknown, John. That's true. God, these window wipes, man. Jeez. I know. They wasted so much money on getting <laughs> these shots done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is probably a surprisingly high CG budget on this movie. Isn't that the room you were sleeping in? Ew. The f fudge. Okay. Yep, there's an arm on there. Oh, ho, ho, ho. whoa. Awesome. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> wow, what a Damn, crazy shot. Dude, these locked off shots, <laughs> though. Whoa, and I love how it's still at a distance. Yeah. That's so creepy. That is unnerving. I love oh how we God. saw the watch but didn't see the dead bodies. Oh my God, these images. Oh. The plane did crash. Don't tell me your wife was on that plane. I feel like I'm watching Revelations. Yeah. But why totally. are some of these bodies like naked? This morning I saw deer. There are a hundred. Maybe more, right in the backyard. <laughs> If you're so worried about it, why don't you just ask mom and dad? No one cares what I say. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Meg. <laughs> oh my god. Yo, people need to stop going to the beach in this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa, it's like north by northwest. Wow! Wow, holy god, what a shot, what a shot, oh. Your daughter watches that show? Every human watches. Are we, are we about to criticize? <laughs> oh, no, 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 oh, Only so much I could take. Careful what you say next. Don't get me wrong, I watched it too. Uh -huh. It's almost nostalgic for a time that never existed, you know? That's kind of a fair point, yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> it's a fantasy. You want to bet the last line of this movie is going to be, where? Say what I mean by that later. <laughs> Ooh, new bad. You got a parasite now, boy. It's the ruins. I feel like we're watching the book of Revelations. You gonna tell us why you're soaking wet? Tell them what you saw. I fell into the pool. You fell into the pool. Why Why hide the information? Am I going to my study and getting me something to wear? I'm afraid this is the only change of clothes I had downstairs. I was gonna protect her from the information. I knew something was coming. What do you mean? The Tao was up. In my line of work, you have to understand the patterns that govern the world. You have to learn how to read the curve. That's part two. That's the title. It's been as long as I have doing it. It can help you see the future. It holds steady. Promises harmony. Also, it's a lot of money. Why are you telling me this? Did your neighbor say something to you? No, he wasn't home. He has a satellite phone. I thought could help us. It didn't work, even though it had enough juice. Now, the whole point of a satellite phone is that you always have a signal if you have a clear view of the sky, which I did. Oh, uh, boy. The only reason why it wouldn't work is if our satellites got knocked out of commission. Spooky. Don't you think you're maybe getting a little carried away? I mean, maybe you just didn't use the phone right now. I saw a plane nose dive out of the sky into the ocean. Thank you. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Pan over to the guy at the piano. What the f uh, Apocalypse just happening around them. Wowie! Whoa, dude. From whence? Yeah, buddy. I bet we ain't gonna find out jack shit about what causes <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's just gonna end with them all lined up looking at something. <laughs> We don't see what it is. Whoa. The the subtle use of image stabilizers in this is wild too. Yeah. The way they mess with the frame rates and way like like this kind of slow motion is great. Yeah. Great shaky cam is awesome. When it's like the shake it follows is with her tied motion. to her footsteps, uh, yeah. yes. Whoa, yeah. 
What noise? Noise, 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 noise. I mean, whoever's causing this is stripping us away from our resources that we primarily rely on, which is all this electronically. Should have covered my ears sooner. Now my head feels weird. Oh. Was it a, um, like a, a plane breaking the sound barrier or whatever that? Planes don't usually break the sound barrier. The Concorde doesn't fly anymore. Maybe it was a plane that we don't know about. Maybe it was UFOs. Why don't you go cuddle up in mommy's bed and read that book deck by you? Read when I have friends looming over me? So when her daughter watches that season two episode of Friends, when Julia Roberts <laughs> yeah. was seducing Chandler. <laughs> it's also in the Ocean's 12 universe. Julia Roberts just exists independently of all these other women who look like Julia Roberts. <laughs> Since you're the one with the crystal ball, was that a bomb? A missile? We don't know anything for certain yet. You seem pretty certain a minute ago with your haunting soliloquy. <laughs> <laughs> yup, uh, fair point. <laughs> We wait for Clay to come back and we see what he's learned. We should fill the bathtubs full of water. Is there enough batteries and Tylenol and food and straw that makes it safe to drink dirty water? I think we shouldn't do anything <laughs> until Clay comes back. What if he's not coming back? Whoa. I thought she was being sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me what you're thinking. There's the blackout and then you see the planes crashing. And I think what Hershaw is trying to tell us that we're not really going to get our answer. What happens next in that sequence? Everything I know, I have told you. I haven't believed you since you walked through that front door. I wonder what it is about us that makes you so mistrustful. You know what you're talking about, don't you? Well, ain't that the pot calling the kettle black. Ruth. Oh, ooh. what is she implying? <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't tell you. If you find out, then let me know. He knew. At the market in town yesterday, there was a guy in the parking lot. He bought... Cases of water and canned goods. Oh, yeah. I would love that. That's all Kevin Bacon's only screen time. Yeah. That's it. Just a harbinger. And he had 10 slams. Bearded guy. Applewood smoked bacon. He's a bearded I'm guy. wearing an old cowboy's hat. Oh, yes, he was wearing a cowboy's hat. That's Danny. He's the contractor I was telling you about. Oh, is he the one who worked on this house? Yeah, he made all the cool deets. What happened? Did you get to town? Uh, I didn't get far. I, you know, and, and then I just started to drive, and then I heard that noise, and then I, I came right back. So wipe the memory? Still running water. I did see something. I It was this huge drone, you know, up in the middle of nowhere, dropping off thousands of these. I, I have no idea what it says. Oh, boy. Oh, oh no. God, I really gotta learn another language. Death to America. Ugh. No. Kids come in handy. I don't know what the rest of this means, but but this part, it definitely means death to America. I remember from a game I was playing. Oh, good. Was it a Call of Duty? I make that first right. This is a straight shot to the expressway. With what we know, the city would be the worst place for you to go. We're not going yeah. to the city. We're going to my sister's New Jersey. Jersey is even better. You have to drive through the city. Right, but to be clear, I make a right. Yeah, it's exactly like how you got here. But listen to me, please. I love how at first I wanted to get rid of them. Yeah. And now he's like, no, you should stay. Uh, yeah. I, I really appreciate you taking care of us. I do. We have to do what's right for our family. Oh, my God. This is in everyone's best interest. Your funeral. Because you're black. Yes. <laughs> you really should have told me what you saw. But I'm certain your mother's plane wouldn't be flying over here. It wasn't the same airline. That's why he wasn't saying so. Okay. Yeah, dude. Is she gone? I just told you it wasn't even the same airline. Yeah, but does it feel like she's gone? Do you have special ESP powers? I bet we never get that answer. I would bet that you're correct. <laughs> Sirens. I thought you were napping, honey. I can't. Why not? Because of the sirens. I don't think it's a terrorist attack. No, it's something greater than that. Oh. Those look like a lot of the same car. A lot of Teslas up here. <laughs> this segment of the film was brought to you in part by... The electric cars. Yeah, you can't just throw electric cars at the problem and expect them to fix it. They just all auto drove here. Self driving, baby. They're all brand new. Oh, whoa, hey, someone's coming. In a white Tesla. <laughs> no one's actually drove the cars. It is yeah, self driving. Oh my god, they did all just drive here. <sighs> But it has automatic, you know, obstruction detection, one would hope, but clearly not. Get in the car right now! 
Oh, take the wheel. Julia, take the wheel. Should we flag him down? Maybe they know something. There's no one in that car! Whoa! Whoa. Cool Jesus. shot. Holy shit! This is that like is Elon Musk's wild. wet dream. <laughs> yeah. Let's get some cyber trucks in there. Whoa. Whoa! Jesus! At least we know the Teslas work. Yes. <laughs> Wow, you ain't getting to no city. It's like a painting right there. That was a gorgeous shot. <sighs> Self that was a short chapter. Yeah. It is biblical. The flood cometh. One of the fears of the self-driving car. You said all those cars came off the lot. Yeah. They did that to every dealership. The main roads are most likely clogged up. That is clever. We stay here till we know more. They are terrorists. These are very smart terrorists. We're probably in the middle of a war zone. People we know oh. are likely dead. Like your mom in the plane. She was probably in the plane, Ruth. <laughs> we, we can't sit here and do nothing. We need to go somewhere. He's right, man. It's too dangerous. He's haunted by the fact that he let that woman die. But is that all he's haunted by? Dude, she's going to die not having seen the end of Friends. Filling up the tub. Too late? Not really. <laughs> That's like marijuana. They got different kinds now, like fruit flavors. Like marijuana. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. I always thought of myself as a sophisticated man. Someone who had seen the world for what it was. But I have never seen anything like this. I mean, okay, look, I get it. Humanity, the way how we have taken over the earth has has destroyed so much of how things naturally work driven animals out of their you take your line of work for example trying to keep up with this while giving commentary <laughs> <laughs> same <laughs> that is most basic my work is and always has been about people I feel real sorry for you then why is that because oh, people, people are terrible look at the way I treated you <laughs> and that makes it okay I am sorry for what I said did thought doesn't matter it some of my smartest clients have lost a lot of money because they base their choices on preconceived beliefs instead of truth. That's why I always say deals if you're a black man. <laughs> <laughs> the quiet is so noisy. Yeah. That's a line. Found it hard to sleep. Not like at home where you hear everything. Yeah. Sirens, traffic, people. Living by the freeway can be comforting. Pull up the sounds of honking on YouTube to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I am starting to like you. I'm seeing past your skin color. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to pop off my mic. Whoa. Yesterday before the symphony, my friend calls me up and wants me to move around some of his money. Oh, no. And as we're getting off the phone, I, I asked if he wants to grab a drink. He tells me he's going away for a while. You hanging with your evil cabal this weekend? Thought that was only during the winter solstice. <laughs> yeah, pagans. And he doesn't laugh. And he always laughs, even with bad jokes. <laughs> Take care oh, of yourself. Man. Almost as if he felt sorry for me. You go ahead and die. Are you thinking that your friend is somehow behind what's happening here? Or he knew. He just knew. Especially when the truth is much scarier. What is the truth? No one is in control. Yeah, he's just getting out of Dodge. No one is pulling the strings. Sure, there are those like my friend. It's all just collapsed in on itself. Who might have the right kind of access to the right kind of information. But when events like this happen in the world, the best even the most powerful people can hope for is a heads up. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. It's Jenga. <laughs> There's always the push-pull I'm feeling is either, either somebody is deeply in control or nobody is in control. <laughs> The only way these stupid things can all happen in our world. <laughs> I'm never gonna find out what happens to Ross and Rachel, am I? You're still on this shit. I'll tell you exactly what happens. <laughs> Why do you care so much about that show anyway? They make me happy. Because I, I want really friends need of my that own. right now, don't you? If there's any hope left in this <laughs> world, we'll at least find out how things turn out for them. I'm sure someone in your house has seen it. The way things are going, you're not gonna see that show ever again. So if I were you, I'd find something else to care about. Big brother of the year. I got lost today. What do you mean you got lost? I thought I knew where I was going, but then there were all these streets that didn't have any signs anywhere. You know, I turned around and then I got just completely lost. I mean, I have no idea how I found my way back here, to be honest. Uh. 
But I did see someone. Uh oh. It's gonna confess to her. A woman on the road. She waved me down. She's speaking Spanish. <sighs> she needed help. And I left her. Shouldn't have vaped. Yeah, truth comes out. In the end, I really do. I mean, even if it is like an invasion. An invasion? Well, or an occupation. Okay, dude, you know what? <laughs> Your word choices are like freaking me the f out. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's the lady from the road. All the birds. Migration. Uh, flamingos? You want to listen to jazz? Sure, why not? Uh, because I thought we were going to have some fun. Jazz can be fun. Now this looks like something a lady can properly dance to. Oh, <laughs> come on. That's not what I brought you in here for. <laughs> I love this thread. I wonder if she could tell I'm hard right now. Ooh. Oh my God. It's like that movie she just did with George Clooney. Julia Roberts dances like me. They wanted to get memed. Yeah, they did. Like, that's the key to success. How do we get memed? If we can make yeah, <laughs> we can get a gif out there. <laughs> we're drunk. You are. Oh, we're married. I'm married. You have a wife. <laughs> She's dead. I don't really miss her. You'll see her again. No. Oh, no. She would. It was her plane. Must have been. What if something happened to her, too? I don't think I could live with myself. Nothing is going to happen to Ruth. I promise. She's riding a flamingo. <laughs> there is no going back to normal. Don't say that. We have to. What? <laughs> no, not the screen. He's got fever. Is he okay? He's a little warm, but I think he'll be fine. I keep thinking about this one West Wing episode. There's this story someone tells the president. You watched the West Wing? <laughs> the story was about a man who lived by the river. In a van down by the river. He hears on the radio that the river is going to flood the town and everyone should leave. But the man doesn't go anywhere because he knows that God loves him and will save him. But then the flood actually happens. Ha! <laughs> Helicopter comes flying by. And the pilot lowers a ladder, but the man tells him he isn't going anywhere. After that, the man drowns in the flood. And so he goes up to heaven, and he's really angry at God. This all happened in the West Wing? <laughs> I prayed to you every day. I thought you loved me. Why didn't you save me? And God says, I sent you a radio report. Yeah, and pay attention to the signs. And a helicopter. What more do you want? What's this about, Rose? This situation. I think I'm done waiting. I'm going to find a DVD of Friends. <laughs> Physical media is the only way. It's just us now, isn't it? If the shit goes down, do you trust these people that are in our house? Aww. That boy was sneaking pictures of me by the pool. That little girl keeps staring into the woods like Donnie Darko, and I'm pretty sure the husband <laughs> wants to f*** me. Hell yeah. He's not actually going to do anything. He's not that guy, but did he want to? Absolutely. My point remains, I don't trust them. <laughs> Discerning, jeez. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you if that's what you're asking. She's so observant. I'm asking for you to remember that if the world falls apart, trust should not be dulled out easily to anyone, especially white people. Fair. Just what exactly was the point of letting them back into the house? What's the right thing to do? And that right there is what's gonna f us in the end. Yeah. Oh, stripping it. That's cool. You're watching like the process of what leads to the survival instincts in an apocalypse. Yeah, you know? totally. Normally you kind of just skip two and this is like what humanity has become. Yeah. And you're watching in this very isolated situation, the evolution of it. Where's Rosie? I don't know. She got up before us. I'm going to look around. She get up. Just going to check all the neighboring houses for DVDs. Oh, you're not so warm now. In fact, you're really yeah. cold. Does your throat hurt? Oh, no. No. Good. Oh, he's a zombie. His leg's falling off. What the f- Is that blood? Ugh! I don't wanna watch- What is happening? Oh. What are you, oh. What are you doing? Oh my god! Ooh! Glue it back in like the Flash. Why are you so casual about this? Oh god! Ew! 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 God, with the roots. I see. Well, Chloe. yeah. Something's wrong with Archie. What is it? Oh, what the. F 
Exactly what I said. Uh, my, my, my teeth just, they feel weird and I, and I... Oh no. Not okay, not okay, not okay. <laughs> Last one. Wait, and were we in a part four already? I guess we were. <laughs> what was part four? Uh, the, the, what? <laughs> the water. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, part three was short. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A bug bit me yesterday in the woods. That must be it then. Probably just a tick, Lyme disease. I've seen stranger symptoms. Stranger than this, and we need to go to the hospital. There ain't no hospital. The expressway's the only way out of town. Besides, but if the roads are jammed, no one would be there to help us anyway. Well, we have to do something. Archie needs to see a doctor. Put your hands on her. I'm telling you, I have looked everywhere, and she's not here. She's not down there. She's behind the painting. She wasn't outside, but I think she may have taken one of the bikes from the garage. A blockbuster? She, she saw some deer, and she wanted to look for them, so maybe there. I don't know. I'm going. Worst stuff to cover your ankles. Oh my god. I'm coming with you. No, it's not safe. You cannot leave me here by myself. He's sick, Ruth. Don't you see that? Dad, you will never come back. Aww. Set a time of one hour. I'll be back. Actually doing it, too. That's good. I'll be back for you before this goes off. Oh, boy. That means we have exactly one hour left in this movie. Oh, Jesus. This is a long movie. <laughs> 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 I was so into it until you told me I was talking about it. <laughs> you gotta watch more of this now. <laughs> Fucking an hour. <laughs> this is, it's got a sweet yeah, ass swirl to it almost. It's like a spiral. It's like Uzumaki. But what does it mean? <laughs> I wanna know what the f is the plan. I wanna know that we can find my kid and then get in your expensive car and drive to an actual hospital and then we can just all go back to our house. Yeah, well, what if that's not possible? Yeah. You don't care that I'm here and my mom is probably at the bottom of some ocean. I don't have anyone else. I have nothing to go home to but them. Do you understand that? Oh. I care. I do. Forcing myself. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that, but I do care. Hug or some? What do you get out of being so angry all the time? Protection from her actual feelings. No, people just suck and she gets to stay away from them. My whole job is to understand people well enough so that I know how to lie to them so I can sell them things they don't really want. Cool. When you really see the way they treat each other, well, you see what they do. And they do it without even thinking about it. You have to kind of just see the worst in people. I think deep down we know we're not fooling anyone. Deep down? No, it's pretty obvious. An agreed upon mass delusion to help us ignore and keep ignoring how awful we really are. Absolutely. Yep. I completely agree with the sentiment. Here, here. That's why I buy Beyond Meat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fixing the problem. <laughs> oh, whoa, the deer. <gasps> she now commands the deer. Yes, she's going to come out riding them. <laughs> Sorry to bother you at home like this. I'm going to need you and your comrade to step off the porch and stand by your vehicle. Your comrade. Off the porch. And buy your vehicle. Man, Kevin Bacon and Julia Roberts used to be such nice leading actors. Now they're playing assholes. Racists. What can I do for you? Just checking on you. If you heard anything about what's going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm Clay. My family ran at GH's, George's at home. We're from the city. <laughs> oh, no. Well, we came out here because my son needs help. Uh, he's vomiting. He's, he's lost his teeth. They just fell out. Can't explain it. Thank you. Well, it's got to have something to do with that noise. You know something about the noise? It's not all that dissimilar to what happened in Cuba a while back. Microwave weapons, they call it, produces a kind of radiation that can be wow. beamed out through sound. What? Something is afoot. Now, what that is exactly, I don't know. Maybe this is as much as we're ever going to know. Maybe we just need to sit tight, pray, whatever works for you. I'm going to watch the Cowboys. Like Clay said, his son isn't well. We're gonna need more than just prayers. Knowing how primed you are for these kind of situations, we're thinking you might have some medicine that'll be able to help you. What I got isn't your business. Survivalism. You telling this man not to take care of his son? Nothing makes a whole lot of sense right now. When the world doesn't make any sense, I can still do what's rational, which is protect my own. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. You gotta stick to your own. Of course. Yeah. And I meant not as a racist thing. Of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My son's really sick. He needs your help. He's 16 years old. Dude, Ethan Hawke is such a good actor. Oh, dude, he's, he's uh, probably like, my favorite actor now. <laughs> like, he can, like, do any role. <laughs> yeah, I love it's, Ethan Hawke. You're in a difficult position. I get it. I would do anything I had to for my family. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, but you were prepared, man. 
Come on, Danny, you can't desert us like this. Haven't you been picking up? Watch me. We've all been deserted. Everyone's being deserted. Make her your leader. What? I would like all of you off of my property. Oh, boy. We're not going anywhere till you give us what we need. Oh, my God. He's going to shoot you, dude. This guy's been waiting for an excuse to shoot somebody. Oh, shit. That's right. Put the gun down, all right? We'll find another way to the hospital. There is no other way. Besides, he's not going to shoot us. Uh, oh. Sounds like he's going to shoot us. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? They just want to scare him away, but also, like... I would not resort to this. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Trying to reason with him. He's white. I can talk to him in white people terms. All the roads are blocked. We're in the middle of God knows where. There's no one else around. I have no idea what I am supposed to do. It's kind of the point. I am a useless man. And that is the point of the movie. <laughs> What would you do if it was your family? That's what I'm doing. It's the only thing I can do. Just kill them, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Please help my son. They did it. It was them, Vic, for sure. Yep, definitely. A thousand percent. All it, was it just takes them. enough screaming. I'm your mom now. Yeah, seriously. Bonding experience. He took the money. Oh my god, <laughs> this guy. Jesus Christ. He took the money. <laughs> oh my god, An old-fashioned barter system was to be expected at some point. Wow, dog. Hey, I got another tidbit for you. Free of charge if you want it. It's the Koreans behind all this. Oof. What makes you say that? Just trust me. The Chinese, one of them. <laughs> oh, God. Right underneath the floor. Right underneath old glory, baby. <laughs> the Chinese, one of them. <laughs> you know... One of those Asian countries, <laughs> they're all the same. <laughs> Big drone, dropping these everywhere. It means death to America, so we're thinking Iranians. I remember hearing something on NPR once about their cyber capabilities. Let's drive, baby. NPR. Before the phones went out, I heard from a friend of mine in San Diego about a similar event, drones dropping pamphlets, except they were in Korean or Mandarin. Like I said, he, could, he couldn't tell which. <laughs> Seeing as he did four tours in Iraq, he sure as shit would have known if it looked like that. We made a lot of enemies around the world. Maybe all this means is a few of them teamed up. Ah, uh, cool. We've created unity. Yeah. That's <laughs> what we were here to do all along. <laughs> Everyone united against us. We're the coach of the world, man. <laughs> United States have united all the other countries. That house. That's got to be where she oh. went. She sees Rosie's body. Oh, but she was looking at that house earlier. No matter how far this thing goes, I need to know that we're good. Because yeah. of what just happened here is happening everywhere. We need to get to that bunker Danny told us about, and we need to get there now. What are you talking about? He's saying that you need to team up and survive together. I had a sneaking suspicion, but I wanted more information first. All the sides were there, sure, but I... <laughs> <laughs> Whole movie. Holding out on his man. <laughs> It would have made more sense if we were on the brink of an all-out invasion. But this, I didn't think we'd actually let something like this happen. I thought we were smarter than that. Nah, uh, no. There's not that much order in the world. Because my primary client works in the defense sector, I spent a lot of time studying the cost-benefit analysis of military campaigns. Gosh. There was one program in particular that terrified my client the most. Three-stage maneuver that could topple a country's government from within. Dialogue they give him. First stage was isolation. Disable their communication and transportation. Make the target as deaf, dumb, and paralyzed as possible. That's us. Yep. Setting them up for the second stage. Synchronized chaos. Terrorize them with covert attacks and misinformation. Yep. Without a clear enemy or motive, people would start turning on each other. That just happened. Hey. We're all part of it. Done successfully, third stage would happen on its own. Civil war. A coup d'etat. Ooh. Civil war. That's what I just... No, you guessed that. I you just know. heard it in my head. You thought, thought was... coup d'etat, and I said so war. So this program was considered the most cost-effective way to destabilize a country. Because if the target nation was dysfunctional enough, it would, in essence, do the work for you. That's America, us! America is doing it on itself? Yeah, because we're just that dysfunctional. <laughs> Can't agree about shit. Whoever started this wants us to finish it. So you're like, 
purging society. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Essentially, but, you know, forced upon you from the outside. One hour. Pedal of the floor, my dude. Oh, is the house over there the same one with the panic room? Ooh, the one you said he'd sleep through. Cool. Thought this movie would hold out on us. Show us in some like bullshit news report. <laughs> yeah. Everything was returned swiftly to normal after some random technical glitch. <laughs> I bet these guys own all ten seasons of Friends in a special Blu-ray collector's pack. <laughs> yeah, what do the thorns have? Let's go. It's broken. Glass means nothing to this camera. Oh my god, you're just in here having the best time. Straight chilling. This is like Buddy the Elf's greatest dream. This is what paid for this entire movie. <laughs> oh, the products on this <laughs> table. <laughs> I have a sudden craving for Pop-Tarts and Reese's and <laughs> Ocean Spray. Wow, good touch. Ooh, I would love to build one of these. Oh my god, the thorns got it hooked up. Oh my god, they got jugs of Aunt Jemima. They don't make Aunt Jemima no more. That's the one problem with these basement, you know, apocalyptic ones. that They're always gross. Whoa, hey. Elevator radiation levels. Where are these reports coming from? Just gonna get friends. Oh my god. Puffy. Come on, find the DVD. <laughs> bye bye, Birdie. Center stage. Everybody loves Raymond. Everybody right there. Raymond. They like club. TV. They, they alphabetize. They alphabetize. They Gilmore alphabetize. Girls. Gilmore Girls. They, the, Go, there's friends. They alphabet. Friday Night Lights. It's alphabetized. Yes. We got it. The final episode. We found a DVD. Physical media. Th this is a real message of the movie is buy all your favorite films on DVD or weird, shows. Weird message, Netflix. This is just one long ad for them bringing DVDs back to Netflix. And then they scratched the DVD. For anyone who hasn't finished Friends, it's a real bummer. We're about to spoil the whole show for everyone. You know. <laughs> Please end right here. Please end right here. Please see it. tell me they did it. Tell me they did it. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love it. And that was the name of the final chapter, right? Chapter five was called the f the final one or the last yeah, one. Yeah, I think so. Wow. <laughs> Damn. Killing it. Well, Rachel got off the plane. Oh. Just to spoil it for everyone. I got off the plane. I mean, I figured the whole movie out. Yeah. Can't believe I did it. You did it, dude. You should write movies like this for Netflix where you'll get paid and residuals and all that other good stuff now. But you know, when you are dealing with an apocalypse like this, yeah. sometimes it's scared to go outside. Yeah, having to forage for food and things. Yeah. Sometimes you just want that food delivered fresh to your doorstep. Yeah. In a way that you could stockpile. And hold on to for any occasion, no matter how simple nor world rending. We have to interrupt this broadcast with a special <laughs> message from myself. Aloha, Reject Nation. Greg here. So, as many of you guys know, most of my days are a couple of hours of filming, and then most of the time it's dedicated to like editing and a bunch of other computer work, often accumulating to like 10 to 12 hours a day. And on top of that, comfort food is like my life's biggest vice. But as many of you also know, working out and getting healthier has been a massive component for me this year in particular. So, in this whirlwind, I have found myself a perfect ally for quick, healthy meals, America's number one meal kit, a meal kit that I have subscribed to prior to ever agreeing working with them. So yes, this is a genuine testimony, and that is of course for HelloFresh. And HelloFresh isn't just about ease, it's about bringing health and flavor to your doorstep. And this holiday season, forget about the stress of planning meals for your health conscious friends. Friends like me, who will breathe down the back of your neck being like, I can't eat that, that's unhealthy. So with HelloFresh, I'm looking forward to hosting holiday dinners that are not only delicious, but also cater to healthy lifestyles. Best part, the variety, it is incredible. I'm pescatarian, so they have these delicious meals just like Dijon onion crunch salmon over lemon broccoli spaghetti. And for my more plant-based days, the vegan maple carrot power bowls, they aren't just meals, they're culinary adventures.
I learned the word culinary. During a long day, the last thing I want to do is spend a while cooking. And that's where HelloFresh's 15-minute meals are a lifesaver. They're quick, nutritious, and oh so tasty perfect for my nonstop lifestyle. So why not join me in making this holiday season both health-conscious and delicious with HelloFresh? With over 45 recipes and seasonal add-ons to choose from every week, there's always something new to try. And here's something to cheer about. Go to HelloFresh.com slash rejects free. And use code rejects free for free breakfast for life. That accurate? That sounds way too good to be true. There's no f- way that can be true. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Rejects Free and use code Rejects Free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box as long as your subscription is active. Tag your HelloFresh creations with hashtag HelloFresh Picks and at HelloFresh. And let's cook up some fun and healthiness, Reject Nation. Remember, it's America's number one meal kit. All right. Thank you. Hello, Fresh. John, before we talk about uh-huh. anything, let's create some categories here. Ooh, chapters, just like in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to make sure we talk about every. Okay. So let's go over the ending. Okay. And then uh, what What else do we have to interpret or do, should we try to find meaning of? Uh, okay. So just. What was really going on? Yeah. What is this apocalypse? What other things happened that we should dissect the meaning of animals animal symbolism yes definitely oh god it's gonna be hard what else we got uh we got color oh. symbolism oh jeez okay. racial subtext oh yeah oh, man this is gonna be a tough one damn yeah. class commentary and uh, we'll go performances. Performances. <laughs> tone. <laughs> Direction and cinematography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go with the ending one first. Ending, ending explained. Yes. Watch us do this without any research. Just, just absorbing what the movie's giving us. Uh-huh. We can do this. Ending explained. All right. So Rosie goes down to the rich man's bunker. Uh-huh. And then finds the friend's DVD, watches the last one. I think there's multiple meanings here, sure. guys. Get ready for this. Greg's about to sound so smart. Smart Greg, incoming. Rachel got off the plane. I think the wife got off the plane. Okay. I think wife survived. That's, uh, that's it's, it's a sim- yes, it's an Simple Easter egg of there. sorts. It's, it's just such a weird ending to end on <laughs> her getting the DVD because there's so much emphasis on it. Okay, let's try to be sincere for sure. just one second, John. Yeah. There is this like, em- there is this emphasis on uh, when they find joy through certain forms of escapism, right? And she, yeah. I mean, the daughter has this whole thing about like world sucks, but I like these friends, people, and it's the way a lot of us describe the show Friends, my favorite show of all time, and. I would describe a very similar experience that this this girl uh, describes friends being as. And then even when um, Mahershala Ali and Julia Roberts they're dancing, it's via through the form of art yeah. through the music, you know. So I think that even in despite these chaotic, tumultuous times that they are living in, uh, to put it lightly, that their source of happiness can still be found in some form of art. Yeah, I would say I think that's maybe what the 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 choice to end on that specific note ultimately is about. Like she finds a genuine smile in that yeah in that heartbeat of a moment, you know, and uh, like she's pigging out, enjoying the junk food. So, I, and but beyond that, I think with ending on friends, which is an art form. <laughs> I'm trying to see, is there like a third time where they find art? Because I'm like, oh my god, is the music in that? Is there another moment? <laughs> well, I mean, there are other things like she says that, like, oh, they love the pool. I just want them to focus on that then. It's like forms of recreation and like simple little things. It's a record, it's dancing, it's swimming, it's being outside, sure. it's finding your favorite show or whatever it might be. And yeah, it's those little things. It's like in a situation that is like asking you to find impossible solutions to what seems like the most insurmountable set of circumstances. It's the simple things, whether it's a world rending scenario or just personally intense stakes. It's the little things that give us respite from that. That's a very solid point. I think we have explained the ending. <laughs> Indeed, friends communal. What have we got here? Friends, people who have become friends, even though at yeah. first they were just strangers yeah, to each other. That's true. 
and they're all kind of you know inhabiting the mm-hmm. same building like in Friends. They don't you know sleep in the same room, but they're neighbors kind of. If you make the house an apartment building, yeah, you know what I mean. And then uh, you know rich friends. <laughs> and then uh, 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 Kevin Bacon is Gunther. You know he, he's <laughs> yeah. just down the road at the cafe. <laughs> Fair enough. He gives them there s- were six people at this home. Six That's members. Six of friends. I think the show Friends has way more to do with it than people realize. <laughs> it does. It does. I think you're correct about that. And then the, for a show that was often criticized for being just only like white folk. Yeah. Got a little bit more diversity here. That's right. This was diverse friends. This was diverse friends what we watched. <laughs> I'll be there for you. Have that song playing over it. When the question posed at the very end with Mahershal Ali and Ethan Hawke was, will you be there for me? Will we be there for each other? When all this shit is truly hitting the fan. Yeah. And are you on the level with me? Can I trust you? Will you be my friend? It, that's, that's what I said. Yep. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. Yeah, that no, was good. I'm saying that's probably what it's about, right? Yeah. I think we have explained the ending. And so, and you hear Julie Roberts' voice outside. Who was on Friends. Who was <laughs> on I emphasize this Friends. enough. <laughs> yes, we hear her voice as, uh, as young uh, Rose is sitting down to watch the show so we can assume that she's going to be found by her mother uh-huh. and that they probably all will hole up in this panic room for as long as the resources can go around. I think they, I know that we didn't get to where they find her, but they see, they see where the house is. Yeah. It is their house. The timer is set. They are going back. They say that they need to go to the bunker. I think it's safe to assume that they will they all, all end up bunker there. down there together and then fight over what we watch on TV. Okay, what was the name of the people who were there? In the house? The Hoth? The Thorns? The Thorns. Yeah, where were, where were they? I don't know. They got out of Dodge. Maybe we'll We're see. not explaining it. See, that's the thing is maybe because they were rich enough to already have this <laughs> off-the-books panic room. Maybe they I had a are, panic room underneath the panic yes. room. Yes, <laughs> or maybe they went someplace else even more secure. <laughs> they have, like, a private island someplace, and they got out early. Because, like, you know, maybe they gave Kevin Bacon a, a heads up, you know, because he was like, hey, you know, here's a little piece of information for free. Your friends the Thorns, why don't you go check them out, huh? So do you think Mahershal Ali was right? We're moving on to that category. Uh, right about which thing? <laughs> about him saying he was breaking it down for Ethan Hawke. Of, gotcha, gotcha. Of saying like this is what's really going on. This three step thing, you know. And I, the implication is that the United States is doing it unto itself, or we are being attacked, and this is this is their plan. Well, no, the message I took from it is is, is if we follow these steps we cut everybody off from everything and then we create you know uh, simultaneous chaos everywhere then the people this divided nation of people will will take care of the rest naturally by you know destroying and eating each other basically perfect i love to hear you know, you're so pent up here in the here in these divided states that uh yeah they'll just we'll take ourselves down mm-hmm. you know all they got to do is introduce a little chaos and then you know, the misinformation, the leaflets, all that stuff. Give us a million directions of where to point the finger. And then, you know, pretty soon, yeah, we'll just all be scavenging and, and looting and all that stuff. Wow. Wow. And you believe that's what was really going on? I believe it. He seems convinced. It seems convincing. And it also doesn't seem like it. it's both to me. It's like, I think, logically speaking, yeah, it is some kind of, you know, uh, tech based attack, because of course, that that seems like a very salient message. We rely so heavily on these interconnected things that we don't fully understand the nature of that if we were to be removed from them, we would be many of us quite helpless. And uh, and so, yeah, it's like that seems like a very conscientious way to take down, you know, a country or whatever it is. And you see the bombs going off. So it seemed relatively reasonable to assume that that what he is saying is happening is probably the case however you'll never know or you until it's over in a situation like this i imagine you wouldn't really know and so i think yeah that that little piece of ambiguity suits it but it does certainly seem like that three-step scenario he was talking about yeah i mean a lot of the themes also seem to be about dealing with reality of the situation yeah. Even right down to, it's probably not on the reaction highlights, and I'm going to watch my words here. Even right down to um, the teen boy in the midst of everything is still like, oh, I'm going to go look at my phone and try to touch myself. <laughs> A lurk on this girl here. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, but he can't ultimately uh, continue to do so. Yeah. Um, and so, but again, and, you know, like even while they're dealing with stuff and they're drinking and 
and vaping and whatever that they're, they're they still try to find like forms of escapism when so much of this is about trying to face face yeah. reality deal with reality the cigarette the vape all those things yeah, yeah man so um that's the wine. one one theme oh man this movie's so multi-layered <laughs> <laughs> it's got, it's, it's got, it's got, you know, it's got, it's got some it's got layers. Yeah. It's based on a book. Oh, is it? I assume so. Uh, didn't it say it was based on a book? I think so. It was adapted or something. There was some, like, line something at the beginning. Like yeah. I adapted for the screen attention. or something like that. Yeah. There was some some text there yeah, <laughs> that yeah. implied based on something. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have that. Themes. There's some good themes. Yeah. Well, and yeah, and, 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 and at uh, what point do you accept... That the I, I think that was a good theme that they brought up the idea of like oh is there a shadowy cabal of people who run the world or is it the scarier alternative that no one's in control and all these things all these tenuous agreements we make collectively that form society are that are tenuous sure. and can be rattled at any moment animals animals yes well for me I was thinking about I mean I've tried saying it but i would get so caught up and oh my god i feel like there's important lines happening here yes so i need to kind of talk while also i'm trying to absorb yeah <laughs> important yeah, lines yeah. to me it brings it back to the uh roots of earth for us sure like when you when you think about like the land of animal there's like this should be a planet that is shared but anim- humans are just another part of the animal kingdom hmm. but we have created this distinction between humans and animals yeah and through this distinction, we have created metropolises and technology and all these things that have slowly corrupted and destroyed our earth, in turn destroying the land of our um, our uh, our neighbors, animals. Yeah. And that's at least what I was taking from it. Well, that was almost... my interpretation of why there was all this emphasis on animals and yeah. messing with migration and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't quite get what deer means. I don't understand. I don't know the actual association of like Let's what do does some... what does horse symbolism mean? What does deer mean? Let's do some deer symbolism. Deer symbolism. In many cultures, the deer is a symbol of spiritual authority. God, yeah. During the deer's life, antlers fall off and grow again, and uh, the animal is also a symbol of regeneration. And in Christian imagination, the deer is a symbol of piety, devotion, and of God taking care then of his children. Then explain to me what it means in the context of this movie, John. Well, all the deer, and that is one of the more overtly supernatural feeling elements of this movie that does flirt with that tone, I guess to me it's perhaps the animals sort of uh, maybe recognizing like, hey, we're already out here, we're away from the city, we're in much more of nature's domain than man's domain, even though you have this fancy house here. Maybe they are recognizing, like, hey, you're kind of being returned to our community in a sense. We are sort of here to recognize you. And I feel like the daughter, both of the daughters are the ones they seem to most communicate to. So maybe there's like a, a Mother Nature thing. Both of the daughters, though they have very different vibes and functions within the story, seem aware of and kind of attuned to things in a way that other characters aren't, or it seems like they're at least not trying to delude themselves the way other characters are. So maybe it is that they have that direct link to the fauna around, uh, you know, in some kind of spiritual kind of sense. I mean, that is that is the point at which the movie does get the most sort of abstracted, and, and you go like, okay, is this... This must really be happening given how this movie has presented itself thus far. So there must be like a hundreds of deer here. Uh, so that part of it is is interesting to me. I'd be curious to hear about people's interpretation of how overt that symbol is used. But you also have the flamingos, you know, which uh, which I don't know if there is a direct flamingo symbol in the. I'm way ahead of you there, oh, John. Oh, what you got? What you got? Symbol of beauty, grace, and a sense of otherworldliness. The presence of flamingos in the story serves as a contrast to the chaotic and unsettling events that occur. They represent a connection to nature, what I've been getting at here. A reminder of the tranquil world that exists beyond the chaos of human existence. Again, bringing us back, stripping us away from these man-made creations. Yeah, they're just here going, hey. I think really that's what every animal sort of means here. In some sense, I mean, yeah, especially the more... 
unless you're in a story that is very removed from the trappings of modern life, especially modern Western life. Uh, yeah, I feel like there's always a little sprinkle of Spanish speaking woman. Uh, well, I mean, that'll be another thing is, is our, I, I guess that's a heightened, uh, version of our inability to communicate in a crisis scenario. And you can't help but imagine maybe if Ethan Hawke had kept his head, uh, you know, he could have been the person we all hope to be, not just the person that we think we would be given the kind of attitude his character displays much of the time and lead up to that. You would expect him to be the guy to be like, get in and we'll figure yeah. this out. But at the same time, he's getting overwhelmed. She's, I, I would love, that's one of those things where I was sitting there going, man, like a Spanish speaker in the audience probably has like a little nugget of context. The rest of us don't. And, uh, and I think that's cool. I think that, that at least, yeah, zeroes in on the fact that a chaos situation like this, there will be yes, literal language barriers, but in the more figurative sense, there will just be communication breakdowns when everyone is in a panic and people are going to handle that situation sloppily. That's part of the controlled chaos that they are introducing here, I guess. It's also the start of like the fear of the unknown. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And I mean, it it heightened it zeroes in on some of that xenophobia, certainly not in a, the most doesn't exist in this movie. <laughs> not in the most malicious way, but in a way, and and what sure. fear does to you. And I mean, too, yeah, like uh, I don't know. There's this was from an earlier point, but there is a certain amount of bargaining. I feel like everybody in this movie does where they're like, no, 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 there's somebody out there. Like someone's going to take care of us. There is an order. There's a hospital we can get to. And it's, you know, everybody is sort of getting, how far does things need to progress before you get to the point where you're like, well, all we have is what we have right here in front of us. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Movie kind of hits the nose, uh, hits the nail on the you know, nose, has head. It's um, the head on the head nose nail. When it comes to, you know, stuff like the electric cars <laughs> and... Um, no, they're saving the world. I mean, one world. you got with the Tesla billionaires. Um, it's okay. It'll be Rivians in a, in a few years from now. <laughs> but but I, think it's, I think it actually spoke more to the point of... I just love how it was like the automated version of the electric car. Well, and that's yeah. <laughs> a slight leap because I don't think cars do that yet. They 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 test that technology, and that's not been implemented yet, from my understanding. Because what? it, uh, it's like fully self driving, no driver intervention or no driver intermediary, just like full on. No, you usually need to. I mean, they. I'm sure they can, uh, but in order for them to usually operate, you need a human body in the driver's seat in order to do it. Yeah, because there are just certain things that... But I'm that, sure they can program it where they don't need a body in there. Well, they're, yeah. they're doing it now, and the reason it's not been made consumer is because they haven't been able to fully rectify the machine's inability to account for certain anomalies, so it will still hit stuff. So yeah. part of me is like, okay, this is a bit of a fantasy because they're not just selling Teslas that self-drive, but, I mean, it is the exact fear you have about those, aside from it just malfunctioning, somebody like maliciously using them to jam up all the roads is like diabolical everything crashing in on itself and that uh, sequence was so it was very intense very intense and also with um yeah like when julia roberts is spouting about of like how we do these things thinking we're making a difference when we're not yeah. and that is us in a nutshell and the i was just, i was just listening to um john oliver's uh um segment about chocolate. Oh. And I had no idea just the amount of child labor <laughs> that goes into the production of our chocolate industry. And yeah. that was quite eye opening. I've been very blind to this. And I, I love chocolate. So I was like, let me buy as much chocolate as I can before I finish this video. <laughs> before my guilt and, kicks in and, and I stop I'll buying go, chocolate anymore. Well, I have a year's supply of chocolate. It would just be a, a waste. A waste yeah. now. So I should They're at least. starving kids who would love to have that chocolate. I should at least finish this chocolate. You should. Or else those poor people, their, their hard work will go to waste. Yes. <laughs> You don't want to spit in the face of all that hard work because they no, just get compensated with the joy of knowing that you're enjoying the chocolate. It did make me 
question myself though. I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't buy chocolate anymore. Holy shit. I have to only buy very specific, ethical, and probably quite pricey but, chocolate. But even to that point though, it does get to a point where even they there's only so much, even for the most ethical of companies, there's only so much mandating they can do to ensure that like the way how the process of this to this to travel to this that their chocolate is of the purest non child laboring <laughs> chocolate you know, yeah and they've they've even had it covers that They're like they even they've had to there's only so much they can do to ensure for the most ethical ones uh and, and so my point being is that with what this movie is talking about you know mm. that what perhaps what we think we're doing as the real contribution to change is is truly not enough mm. that the impending doom of it all because there's this, their environmentalism talks here uh i think this whole thing of world decaying in and of itself is very much an environmental allegory in a lot of ways there's a lot of different things they're talking about but at the end of the day it keeps coming back to like it starts off with our character of julie roberts who is essentially our main character saying she hates people, but in the end of it all, when everything's stripped down, we will need to rely on each other, the the few who we can trust. Yeah, because that's all you have either way is people. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah and that is kind of like the nebulous of humanity. I think it was Darwin. Oh, could be wrong here. Careful. But I'm going to say it, and it's up to you if you want to research it. I don't want your pagan that, theories. That there are things about... Um, I remember the meaning, at least, is that... Uh, it humanity has thrived through cooperation mm. that's how we thrive so when you strip us down to our bare bones that love is kind of in our dna mm. of cooperation mm. that's a lovely sentiment yeah it's a bunch of bullshit i don't like it at all yeah, people. not in the uh, real world not out here in the mean streets not when the chips are down and everyone's desperate <laughs> um and uh, let's talk about performances um, I loved, <laughs> I loved it. I loved Oliver. I mean, it was like watching a play. Yes. I love Julia Roberts's work here. It's been a while since I've seen, like, I saw her in Ticket to Paradise with George Clooney and much as I love watching my old celebrities <laughs> um, uh, fall in love. What? Uh, you didn't love the movie? I liked it a lot. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah, I like, cool. I like rom-coms. I liked it a lot. Good. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, I, I watch a lot of rom-coms. <laughs> it's like I don't ever react to them. Sure. But I, I don't know, I'll go through my phases where I'm like watching nothing but rom-coms. And, uh, and I love that. I, I quite enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. It was a little different, too. And, and uh, what's it wrong? It hit me. Finally hit me where I recognized the actor who plays Ruth. She's on that episode of Black Mirror. She's the, the second episode. Yeah, the documentary one. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. Boom. Netflix, keep it in house. Don't pay residuals. <laughs> That's, <right. laughs> yeah. That's how we do it. We so, uh, <laughs> stable of actors. We don't have to pay much. And which, there you go. So always, this is kind of a Black Mirror esque episode. Very much. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think Julia Roberts was excellent here. Mm -hmm. Showed the most growth. Yeah, and a character that that is not the most glamorous to take on, but requires a lot of subtle chops from an actor. Yeah, yeah, she was excellent. Her and Ethan Hawke, I really believed as a couple. I think Ethan Hawke is absolutely excellent. He's a fire in every role the guy ever does. Yeah, no matter what genre, he really is like a chameleon. He's special. He's he's a true true talent. Yeah, because he's just so he just seems so natural in any role he slips into. Yeah, and even here is like he's not the tough one in the relationship. <laughs> Oh, that whole yeah. useless man speech broke my heart. And I was like, yeah, that's a lot of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's me all the time. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. And, and early on, he even says that thing. He's like, your mom's the tech whiz. You know, yeah. I'm just a thing. He's just a thinker guy. Yeah. Loved his work. Mahershal Lee commands as usual. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I do love the direction. It was smart. It was smart of the movie to not to create an immediate plot. Of like a horrible, of like a terrifying Airbnb situation gone wrong, right? Yeah, get barbarian with us. Get barbarian, make you suspicious of like what's really at play here. Is it going to be about these people caving in on themselves? As the movie does lose sight of its like immediate plot and become all about what's going on in the world and yeah. commentary. Yeah, like it does not. In the last like hour, it does just become about that. It's all outside. symbolism and topics. And I then, guess we're all who we yeah, say we are. There's chaos happening all around. I did kind of 
wish the movie focused in a little bit on how do you keep it about what's really going on between the people in the house yeah. and that plot and then letting the commentary also coincide with that versus let's really just make it about what's going on out here yeah and fun stuff um so yeah that was one part of it but the performances remained as strong as ever from beginning and like everyone had chemistry the children writing children i i think writing a like uh i don't like to criticize a child's performance and b i don't uh i i, I often fluctuate on a criticism of writing children because i i don't ever go that's not how children talk because i don't know children and yeah. <laughs> and i don't work with children so i don't really know like I think about how children now, as opposed to when we grew up, uh, they grow up with cell phones and iPads that give them access to um, all kinds of media that will, that might make their the way they speak and their vernacular and all that be much more um, more advanced, more wide ranging yeah. than how when how I grew up because of the amount of exposure they have. That it, it either, some people think it limits one's uh, capacity to learn but at the same time it could also enhance one's language just due to the amount of exposure they have well, you it know? makes a lot of things more second nature and it is interesting because we live in a time where you know you have the idea in your mind from my from, you know from our perspective i'm sure of like movies where kids talk like adults and it's a trope and it's and yeah it's, the and precocious it's, child yeah but we also now live in a moment where kids or at least younger and younger kids are able to speak with more and more adult inflection and vocabulary because of the vastness of the internet they have access to and like yeah, yeah. I think you, you said something during the movie, w w which I think is true. It's like you know, it's hard to write kids, partly because you're probably drawing from kid talk from when you were a kid, which was probably a while ago. And now we live in a time where more so, I think, than ever before. Just again, because of what the advancement of the internet and every kid having an iPad or an iPhone is. Like, yeah, there is a different. It's not the same as precocious child of yesteryear, but it is like a different tonality of of characterization i guess and it is hard yeah. to nail down certainly and I, I mean between the two i i think i preferred rose to the brother for the character yes <laughs> yeah i thought the we hear audio doesn't matter doesn't matter. Doesn't matter as long as it's not in the video. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I I think the t the teen boy. God, what the hell is his name? It's definitely coming from in the computer, though. <laughs> what is this? Yeah. What is happening right now? <laughs> yeah, it's coming from in the computer. Where is it? There. We're so late in the video. It's not. It's the this confusion is happening. What's going on out there, John? It's running. It can't be. Uh, I'm, it doesn't make any sense. I'm just going to close out all of our web windows. Just close it all out. Shut it down. All right. I mean, there's only so many things I can shut down now. Shut it down. Shut it all down. Something's playing on a loop. It's Koi's voice right. from some other earlier recording, and I don't like it. I don't like to hear it. Nope. I don't like to hear a vagary, even if it's not in our... Our little record. <laughs> Even there's if it's a, not on our headphones. There's a tiny bit. I don't like any of it, John. None of it. It's bothering it's me. It's gone. It's bothering me. All right, cool. Let's just keep talking. I We're think fine. it's gone. We're fine. Um, so, teen boy, like, while, like, very much no depth at all to that character. No. <laughs> uh, not even like an attempt at depth. Like anti depth. Yeah, he's just that typical teenage boy. He's a horny teenager. <laughs> and I'm like, what else is there and to And my sister is a drag, and I'm going to do everything I can to not open up to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, did, uh, I didn't really care for him, uh, but I weirdly found the writing on him a more believable just because of the cliche of a teenage boy. And I know sure. what it's like to be a teenage boy. So sure. I, even though I didn't behave like that when I was a teenage boy, I, I, I know knew that guy. I've known enough teenage boys yeah, when I was yeah. a teenager to get that. And, uh, and, and her like that, that was my point of, of, of like, I can't sit here and tell you that 
little girl wasn't believable because I don't know what's it's hard for me to wrap my head around finding this little girl believable, even though I'm sure there are little girls out there who are just as like hyper intelligent and precarious and thought provoking. <laughs> but I still liked her character enough um, to enjoy when she was on screen. The Rose character, the, yeah, the, the yeah. young, young one. Yeah, I, I guess I was maybe drawn to her a bit more just because of how, like, strange her vibe always was. She almost reminded me of the little sister from Hereditary, but, like, way less, you know, sort of intentionally, like, oh, this is a strange character. Um, but I don't know. I, I can't uh, disagree with you. Really. Watching all the West Wing. Yeah, it was great. Uh, they, I mean, they they her whole role is TV, but I guess I kind of... Only the Aaron Sorkin episodes. I was like, okay, this is a little too self-aware for my taste right now. Yeah. It's <laughs> like one of those you. things where I'm like, I don't necessarily put it beyond a character like this to have that level of observation or detail or dig into her interests or whatever. Uh, but but that's a very writerly thing is to to name check Aaron. Yeah, Sorkin. and just because you have Julia Roberts being like, you watch West Wing suddenly makes that believable, I guess. Um, it's Ruth lampshading a little bit, yeah. Ruth, I liked Ruth. I thought Ruth. I mean, Ruth has to occupy the in between space between the young kids and the adult adults, and uh, and I liked the inter. I mean, I liked her kind of vibe because she is the most. Uh, the most contrast from everybody else. And I think that her presence does interesting things for all the different characters. And yeah, like I, I they should have written her to be more seductive. <laughs> that would have been more cliche. So you could have been more tempting to Ethan Hawke's yeah, character. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can turn this into knock, knock all of a sudden. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I like that they flirted with that stuff and didn't go there. I like that. She's like, yeah, he's not that guy. Like he wanted to, but he's not that guy. Uh, I, I liked things like that, and I thought the interplay between her and her father, it's like even though they are presented as a unit and, you know, it, there is a very us and them between, you know, the two pairs at first. Us or them, them Coral. Uh, <laughs> but I thought that their tension between each other was also a nice detail, like a microcosm, because, of course, he's going to try and be managing her expectations, but also she's super sharp, not very complacent, not likely to be the kind to just accept whatever comfort is being sold thousand percent and i mean you know in terms of all the characters even though mahershala ali seems to have the most concrete actionable knowledge of all of our main characters she does seem to be the one with like the most pragmatic attitude oh for sure um and i thought her performance was uh, was quite good too so uh, i don't know i i like that character i liked her too yeah. i liked her too um Everyone was really good. Uh, I thought the direction for for this was solid. I actually really appreciated how we would see actual outside world stuff instead of just only key. Like I, I like the stories where they just keep it contained to the house. Don't get me wrong. Like I, I'm a sucker for that. And there's, and there's one part of me that's like, ooh, I would have loved liked to have seen that version. Yeah. Um, but uh, as it stands, I do think that this version that we got is pretty compelling. Yeah. And I like the glimpses we would get when they would be like on the beach or when they would be on the road and the Teslas are crashing or when they see the outside world, uh, New York, New York City uh, to be destroyed. I feel uh, convincingly cut off from everything. Yeah. Yeah. What's this movie called again? Leave the world behind. Leave the world behind. Sorry, guys. Got to prep some footage <laughs> simultaneously while talking because time crunch. Oh, and we got uh, Kevin Bacon, too. Kevin Bacon. I think um, I think as Kevin Bacon has gotten I, I wasn't a big fan of Kevin Bacon when I was a kid. Okay. But when he's got, as he's gotten older, I have really grown to like like the older Kevin Bacon yeah, performances absolutely. a lot. The grizzled Kevin Bacon. World-weathered yeah. Kevin Bacon is, yeah, is I, a very I good really, Bacon. I really like, I mean, I've always, I've always kind of liked it. I, I, that's a lie. I've always liked Kevin Bacon, but I've never. But I've really, especially liked him as he's gotten older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been way more drawn to his like older man performances. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, because he brings a good amount of like presence and 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 yeah, he can show up and and it feels like effortless, but also like he showed up. And here, you know, it's like you see him in that one shot, and the movie was compelling enough that I forgot about him for a long time. And even though he's only in a brief sequence, you know, meaningfully. Uh, I thought, yeah, his, he still showed up and really kind of, you know, fully committed to the kind of character who he is. And it's another aspect of the movie that is certainly playing on. And I like that this movie played on and used, but didn't get lost in 
I'm not get lost in, but I don't know. I think it's it's appropriate the way the movie uses the sort of appearances and the suspicion based on appearances. You see this guy and you're like, oh, okay, of course this is the guy who would be prepared for all of this, and of course for the two of us, the the yuppie city guy, and you know person of color out here on your American flag doorstep. You know maybe there's some precariousness to this situation. And uh, it's altogether different feeling than, you know, when they have the first meeting with, you know, Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke on the porch. Um, But, yeah, it's like without it it manages to encapsulate a lot of the fears and paranoias people have, some that are primal and, you know, everybody has and some that are more societal and some that are based on, yeah, like cultural reservations and prejudices and whatnot. Yeah, I thought it was great, and I think the direction. So I think the direction overall was excellent. Um, I, I think there's a lot of like really wonderfully shot sequences with um, some distorted angles and um, some beautiful symmetry throughout. And they managed to make. Some, and when they wanted to, they have to make play scene movies feel very like cinematic, and they did. Yeah. And and I think too when they did do sequences that. Uh, were like out on the road or whatever on the beach. They, they weren't like overshooting their load. Like it felt very much like, oh no, they you know, they know what they're doing, and this is really composed. Yeah. Um, music I thought was excellent. All the hearkening back to like old school types of horror. Again, I kept getting like Twilight Zone flares from it. Uh, really enjoyed that. Yeah, the sound piano design flourish they kept going for. Oh yeah, sound design uh, was great too. Yeah. Um, now I and guess then the, the the needle drops were were nicely contrasted for the most part. Now I guess the one thing left to talk about is: Did you like the movie? <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah. It's it's a movie. I'm gonna keep thinking about it. It's a movie that I can you give me that hard drive. Certainly, uh, it's, it's ejected enjoyed in an immediate sense like I, I love the kind of movie that makes you sit there and makes you sort of wonder and puts you in the paranoia and it feels like some big conspiracy is going down and it's it's kind of neat to me that a political what is essentially a political thriller about a terrorist attack or ostensibly is that they cut to the moon at one point could be aliens who knows uh but you know it, it's almost like a political thriller without it was interesting it did, you did get the sense of like is it an alien invasion yeah, and it's fun because in that way it feels like you're watching yeah an apocalypse movie or maybe an alien invasion movie or maybe some weird The Happening or uh, whatever the house knock at the cabin ended up being or knock something at the like cabin in the woods. Yeah, the last house in the cabin. Oh, you didn't see that knock- movie, did no, you? No, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> but- I mean, not, it's, it's, it's very. I mean, that one's more. I don't want that one's more religious based. Um, sure, but but uh, but at least from the trailer, that sort of like something no, yeah. is coming, and there's and we're is isolated real, and yeah. paranoid, yeah. and, and this will be kind of like a play, maybe <laughs> thousand percent. Uh, yeah, and so I, I love that kind of a vibe, and I like that this movie was able to kind of keep you guessing as to like what version of that are we watching. I thought it was appropriate where they landed to give you pretty much the idea without fully confirming the idea. As we've sat here and talked about it, it's sort of uh, 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 calcifying in a pretty agreeable way with me. Like initially, the way where it ends, I was like, oh, it would be such a meme if they end it right here. But also in thinking about it, I'm like, where else would I have ended this? Because it it ends off in a way where part of you is like, well, this could easily keep going, <laughs> you know. But I think at least tonally right now, I, I kind of feel satisfied with what it is. I don't know exactly how great I would say this is compared to what its aspirations are, but I don't think it's falling very far short of its aspirations. And I think it's, at least right now, I thought it was pretty good. I'm going to see, okay, I haven't seen the audience score yet. Okay. Right now, it's got a 75% on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. I haven't seen the audience score. Okay. Uh, I just want to get my opinion before it's influenced by the audience score. Then yeah. I've got to change my entire point yeah, of view. Yeah, uh, update it for the, the crowd. Um, but before we do that, John, um, here I'm creating this little folder. What did you think of Obama's up. producing? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's trying to uh, you know, have another career post-presidency. Yeah, <laughs> He's just got nothing now. He's yeah. just out here hustling, trying to get a buck. Uh, <laughs> can you put this in there? <laughs> yes, of course. I do think uh, it's fun and charming uh, that this is what they chose to produce. Uh, I think they produce other stuff. Um, but, you know. 
I think it speaks a little bit. I, th- I think it, it makes it puts it in a certain kind of lens. <laughs> Obama's you... secretly telling us what to look out for yeah, in terms like, of apocalypse. I'm giving you government secrets in this movie, <laughs> yeah. guys. Yeah, exactly. I learned this shit. This yeah. is text. Keep this close and learn from it. <laughs> uh, I I like that. I did like the movie. I I enjoyed it and. Um, I was really into it like the first hour and 15 hour, 20 minute mark. Um, and, and I kind of did, you know, sort of reveal already, like where movies started slowly losing me a bit was when it does get bogged down more in the, like everything stays strong, like solid direction. Uh, and the acting just remains phenomenal. The acting really, I think helps save a lot of that last hour for me. Sure. Um, and while I like the plot, while I like the plot and everything they're commentating on and 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 stuff and and sometimes the writing, it, it's weird. This movie is one of those things where and it's all open to interpretation. It doesn't ever. It's it's a it, it, it borders on becoming so expositional about what its point is. Yes, and then it also simultaneously leaves you with that didn't quite tell you what the point of the movie is. It didn't quite leave you with the answer. Like I. It, it weirdly leaves you in this terrain of exposition heavy and ambiguity <laughs> like at the same time and normally you don't get both and and, yeah. it, and it kind of it's leaves that, you with both it, it yeah. definitely is one of those movies that is is doing a big contrast of like here's the plot stuff and we're not gonna yeah. spoon feed you the actual story stuff <laughs> like yeah, and I, yeah and I think that um I I could have used a little bit more character driven narrative. And not not lose sight of that, basically, as it, it were. It kind of seemed like it wanted to talk more about its ideas, and then it would remind itself the storytelling. Maybe it's like it in the book. I don't really give a shit. We're talking about the movie, <laughs> all right? Um, it, that it would remind itself, like we got to be a little bit about the characters and the intensity of what's sure. happening with the characters. Uh, like everything with like Mahershala Ali going to the beach and all that, and the suspicions, and then who, can they trust each other? And should they go? Should the you know, Julie Roberts and Ethan Hawke family, should they leave? Oh, that was all so gripping to me whilst doing the commentary of what the hell's going on in the outside world. Like, I was really enjoying that. And and then when it, it, it kind of brought it back around to the scene with Kevin Bacon at the end of, like, that immediacy, and I was going, like, I don't want Mahershala Ali to die right now, and nor do I want Ethan Hawke to die right now. I don't want anyone to get shot right now. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, I hope none of these guys get killed. Yeah. Um. And it's not like I ever stopped caring during the film, but I did start to feel its runtime at a certain point. Yeah. Because I wasn't as invested in the character narrative and I was finding it be more about what it wants to talk about yeah. than, it, than it does want to tell it through the lens of the characters. Mm-hmm. And 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 I and that's the one thing about its focus that I wish it it honed in on a little bit more. Sure. So overall, I, I really did like it. Like I think there's a lot of craftsmanship to it that I really enjoyed. And you know, for a street for in, in a day and age where, where Netflix dumps like a billion originals mm-hmm. and, and and whatever, uh, I, I could see why this one stood out. Why this one became a conversation. Yeah. Uh, not only because of what it's yeah, conversing with this audience about. But because of its caliber of filmmaking that it does, yeah, you know, totally. and like there is some real filmmaking to this. I could have seen this as a theater experience, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it doesn't feel like made for TV or made directly for stream. Like I could have seen this as a theater going experience. I think that I think if it was the theater, they probably would have wanted a more concrete ending. They probably yes. would have wanted something that lays it out a little bit better for its audience because I could see a scenario where some people feel like it's ab- abrupt the way it ends. Mm-hmm. Whereas, well, whereas yeah. you were able to, because I didn't, I actually didn't think it was going to end when it ended. Yeah. Whereas you were here going, please let it end now, please. And it did. And you were satisfied. <laughs> and for me, I didn't even get an inkling that it was going to end right there. Sure. And I yeah. bet a lot of people might not. Because, <laughs> because you watch as like a bunch Dude, of things. Got low ass audience score. Yeah. On. <laughs> that is really, oh, that is really low. Bad. Holy Damn. balls. That is a low audience score. Because you do watch a bunch of things that are l- loosely together, like really kind of scatter. And then the movie ends. It's like they're seems all like, separated and they're all. Seems these, like most people are pretty upset. Because of the ending. 
I bet. Because you from get this quick five seconds of scrolling. Because you reach this crescendo with all the deer and you're like, whoa, where do you? And, and, and something happened with the sun. I guess he just did have Lyme disease, like a Lyme disease, fast acting, teeth falling. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, you have these crescendos of like they've run off into the woods and they have this thing with the deer and she's looking off at the beach and, and the explosion's happening. And then Ethan Hawke and Mahershali, they're all down the road and there yeah. was Kevin Bacon. And the girl, she's in the panic room. And, uh, and, and yeah, it ends at a point where everything feels feels i think innately kind of like you're in the middle of something <laughs> you know and uh and yeah I, I think it's a thematic end point that at least again to me right now uh, i'm not a hundred percent clicked in on but i'm like yeah i i appreciate the the quirk of this choice but i can also absolutely see people hating that because it it gets you to that point where you're like the only real direction you have is when Ethan Hawke and Marshall Ali are leaving Kevin Bacon. And they're like, well, I guess we're just going to go back and we got the medicine. But the rest is all like, you know, they're, they're shouting, still trying to find Rose. And Rose is off doing her own thing. And like, yeah, I can. It just all it all feels like a bunch of big things presented. And then it's and then it's immediately done. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I Because I do think that sometimes the I do feel like sometimes the dialogue overall while again like so much goes to the, the directors especially i mean the actors especially and then occasionally some certain choice with the directors uh with the direction like like um when like when Mahershala Ali is first giving this the spiel a spiel about government agent defense person and not saying who it is yeah and then there's this little moment where he like put puts his hand on her to stop her from getting her drink and he gets a little more serious and the camera closes i'm like okay that was a good way to make that more interesting yeah um cuz sometimes it feels like they're it could be easy for some moments when I pull out to go, this kind of feels like rambling pretentiousness. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. But I didn't ever fully get there. <laughs> uh, yeah. I with, any, with any moment, even though at times that's what I meant by how it would ride this line where I feel like I'm getting so told what this movie's about and then going, what is this movie about exactly? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. I get you. Because, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like you have to look at everything and assume that most everything yeah. we are being given or shown is important somehow. And I didn't think we needed the, like, as much as I felt like Kevin Bacon played that role, and this is coming from a from a man who identifies as liberal, or right, I'll tell you, this is a guy who identifies as liberal. And, and as funny as I thought the moment was, I thought it was really funny. Um, oh, I, God. Oh. The, with the Korean or, or whatever. Maybe it's They're Chinese. This, maybe yeah. Chinese. Yeah, yeah. As much, because this movie's produced by Obama. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Hollywood is full of a bunch of leftists. You know? That's right, bro. I think leftists. that you could have saved yourself a lot of, when already a lot of this is very much like leftist scare tactics, whatever the yeah, fuck you want to yeah, call it, right? Yeah. As much as it's already there, and so much of the sentiment we obviously agree with, right? I think cutting that out probably would have helped the movie's points get across a little bit better. Because then, it's th especially for that to be so close to the end of the film. Yeah, that does kind of cloud a lot of I'm like, because you don't need to like if if this movie wants to be about its messages, if this movie wants to be about its commentary. Yeah, to some extent. Right. And, and, and like, I think doing something that specifically obviously is going against, you know, like your your typical right wing personality. Um, which I think was in the form of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> That's the way I saw it. Well, <laughs> yeah, like he this is big American flag, or like the Korean or tiny, you know. And, and I and I got my society day shit yeah. all sorted out. Yeah, yeah it's it's meant to f appear a certain way at face value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and I mean, and you, I, th I I think having that line excised probably would have saved a little bit of blowback <laughs> perhaps yeah i'm curious because i mean you know maybe i'm reading more into it than i need to i i personally just feel that way i'm i am i don't know i'd be curious to hear people's thoughts i mean i think it does draw uh the main i mean julia roberts and ethan hawk i feel like are drawn as kind of a, a yuppie neoliberal couple in a way that yeah, definitely. isn't overt as it is in like a get out but like in a way that is clearly commenting on them as people and, and hey, even though they might appear, you know, like this, you know, uh, both beautiful and also, you know, like 
I don't know. They 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 get to the dysfunction of their family later, but you know they appear as like you know a hip and with it couple, and he is very open and accepting of things and 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 all that. And and yeah, they're not really all that they want to sell you that they are. Uh, and then yeah, you have Kevin Bacon, who's like a much more bold face sort of. Yeah, it's just a thing you would expect from a character like that. And so it, the one is more subtle and the other is not. <laughs> yeah, because you have like Julia Roberts, who is pretty much admitting to like, yeah, I had subconscious racism definitely factoring in when I first met you. Like she's yeah. her characters admitting to that. And the whole I hate people in general. You know? I, I hate people in general or even like I, I could see the Spanish speaking woman as a fear of the unknown again with, you know, um, yeah, like I, people I coming into our country, I accept borders. all people, yeah. but when I have to deal with them, I don't know what to do. And yeah, I don't feel like we are as the same as I would say in polite conversation or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and you know, again, to hammer in that point of the movie of we aren't really doing enough. Yeah, and we can say a lot, and we can think we're contributing, but we're really not. Yeah, you know? and there's so much we do every yeah. day that is kind of meaningless and performative and all that stuff. Yeah, I think well, when you when you get to that whole thing at the end with Kevin Bacon's character, which is those little couple lines, uh, it's like, yeah, a little, a little much. <laughs> it is. It, 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 much. I thought it was really funny. I feel like the delivery, intentionally funny. Like, I, yeah. I, thought, I thought the delivery was so good. You know, um, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but I, I do think that you, you're already, like, pushing the boundaries and it's your political point of views here. This movie's very political. It's extremely political. Yeah, and it's yeah. not and and it's not like without that beat you wouldn't be able to communicate yeah. the idea that the leaflets that Ethan Hawke finds uh, you know, being you could still establish that the same thing happened with leaflets printed in Korean or Chinese or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that it's all part of a misinformation scheme without that little character, you know, Nick of like, oh, yeah, and he doesn't care what the difference is. Sure, sure. You know, at first he seems so sure it's Korea, and the second someone's like, are you sure? He's like, well, I don't know, it could be anything. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Which, again, I, I guess I'm I'm torn because it is funny, and it's like a real thing, and it serves the moment in that initially you think, again, Oh, this guy must know. And then it's like, well, he doesn't really know. He just has like a vague piece of context, which yeah. is about as good as you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, at the same time, it is one of the more uh, directly caricaturous ish elements of the characterization here. Yeah. Even though he's the one who's the survival one, he's the one who had was ahead of the curb here. And he helps out. I mean, he, he does out. eventually take the money and yeah, give even, them the pills. Even though, but, and I just think, oh, but then taking a jab at that uh, kind of negates, like, like you're already painting this guy already in not the greatest light. Yeah. You don't need to do like that additional stuff. Because we already know what's better okay. about Ethan Hawke and Mahershala Ali being able yeah. to team up where clearly this guy's not going to be willing to team up with y'all. Like the contrast will be there whether we have that, yeah, beat or not. <laughs> yeah, man. But um, overall, I liked it. Overall, yeah. I thought, uh, overall, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, it's a good time. And uh, maybe one day I'll watch it again. Maybe. It's no bird box. <laughs> so I'll, uh, maybe not. A movie I could not finish. Oh, a movie I haven't even started. Couldn't do it. Aw. I was like, I'm going to put it on. And I was like 40 minutes. And I was like, I don't think I like the only this movie's for me. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm excited now. I I'm going to check I it out. I did not like the, uh, there was so much about it. I really didn't like it. Really? <laughs> yeah. I just kind of get on board with it. Oh, I have so many questions now. <laughs> As the movie will leave you with. Um, I think I don't know. Well, we stop forty minutes in. <laughs> definitely gonna ask questions to <laughs> finish it. Just couldn't stand the characters, man. Just couldn't stand it. That's fair. That's fair. Like or, that felt like a streaming movie to me for sure. This felt way more above that. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Did it feel? Uh, Even though I know people like Bird Box way more than <laughs> like this movie. I was yeah. gonna say, did that movie feel very high on its messaging? Did it feel very like we're recall. doing profound shit over here in the bird box? I don't recall thinking that. I just remember really not finding the characters believable. And, and it, to me, it was the characters. I just didn't like the characters. Okay. Good to know. And I didn't think the good actors um, were enough to elevate it or help me see past how terrible the characters were. Sandy didn't save the movie. I don't remember who that is. Sandra Bullock. Oh, yes. The lead. <laughs> she did not save it for me. Oh. All right, but what did you guys think of the Leave the World Behind? Leave your thoughts down below. Appreciate y'all being here. Um, be sure to subscribe. Tell us who you're voting for in the comments. Um, 
keep politics out of this video. Yes. But put it in the comments. Yeah. Keep your politics out who's of your, my Who's political. your 2024 vote in coming this election year? Woo! Which debate are you looking forward to the most? Oh, yeah. In your specific state you live in. Um, you, what third-party candidate will you cast a vote for in order to ensure that your vote doesn't really sway anyway? If you're in the actual election, if you're not part of America, what do you think about America? Leave your thoughts down below Ooh. in the comments. What have you th thought about our recent presidency? Mm, and the one before that, and, and the, the one, one before that. Leave it all down in the comments below, and whoever replies to you, make sure to reply back to them, mm -hmm. and keep that conversation going. Yeah, whatever it takes. Don't even you don't even have to listen to each other. Just keep spouting your own point of view. And uh, fill that comment box. I think as long as you guys keep trying to convince each other that you're the right one. 100% right, by the way. Yeah. One of you is bound to be not wasting their time. 50-50 mm -hmm. shot. It could be you. <laughs> so this is the Patriot of the Day shout out. <laughs> All right, John, pick a name. Uh, Pandemic Jones. Pandemic Jones, my friend. Merry Christmas. You know what Santa's giving you this year? Ooh. Well, what do we know about Pandemic Jones? What and do we know? He's giving you an, an he's inoculation. Giving, he's, he, what? <laughs> an inoculate a vaccination. Uh, that's exactly what I was gonna say, hey! except not with the, such fancy terminology. Oh, sorry. Yeah, vaccines inoculate you to various diseases and or too high brow vernacular for my brain. What the hell was that, John? That's Ebenezer Scrooge of me. Let me bring it down <laughs> to the the street level. That's right. You're getting the jab this year, my friend pandemic and you know what this one's going to protect you against more than just what everyone else is protected mm, against you're going to get RSV. you're going to get protected against you know um people's incompetence oh, you're yeah. going to get protected against uh herpes you're going to yeah. get protected against uh just the, like paying too much for stuff at the grocery or any other store it's a coupon really is yeah. what you're getting mm -hmm. and you're also going to get protected against being uh, taken advantage of at card mechanics. What, just, whenever I'm about to finally insert, you just right, go right, and I'll insert. You You're going to be mic. protected against interruptions is what I hope you get protected against. Mr. Uh, would you say inoculation? It worked. <laughs> it? Yes, it did. Because <laughs> I remember the word now. I didn't interrupt it's, you then. It's my new favorite <laughs> word. <laughs> yeah. Get inoculated, baby. Merry Christmas, PJ. Hope Santa or Jesus or somebody gives you something special this year. The jab. This. <laughs>